Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned enchantment aura deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and I thought I would give this a try in best of three as that's where we really see the benefit of playing a third color as opposed to the traditional green-white versions. So at the core of the deck we're a Satessan Champion Season of Growth deck. These are the draw engines we have available. Satessan Champion drawing a card whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under our control as well as getting a plus one plus one counter. And then Season of Growth drawing a card whenever we cast a spell that targets one of our creatures. So the overlap with both cards of course is playing a bunch of auras that are both enchantments as well as spells that target our creatures. And we've got plenty of auras in the deck, including the full playset of Sentinel's Eyes, which can give the enchanted creature plus one plus one and Vigilance, which is also a great combo with Paradise Druid. Two mana for a 2-1 Hexproof creature, as long as it's untapped and can also function as a mana creature. So if we put our Sentinel's Eyes on Paradise Druid and give it Vigilance, then we can suddenly attack with our Druid while still retaining the Hexproof. And that makes it a safe target for various auras, so we don't get blown out by a removal spell. And then some other auras in the deck, we've got the full playset of all that glitters, giving the enchanted creature plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control, which can definitely add up. We've got the full playset of Satessan Training, giving the enchanted creature plus one plus one and Trample, so nice way to get past chum blockers, as well as drawing a card when the training enters the battlefield. And then the full playset of Staggering Insight, another one of the upsides of playing blue in the deck. The enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and lifelink, as well as whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So that's another potential draw engine we have available. And then some other inclusions, we've got the full playset of Alcide of Life's Bounty, which is a nice way to protect one of our key creatures that may have a bunch of enchantments on it, as we can sacrifice it and give the targeted creature protection of the color of our choice. We do have to be a little bit mindful if we name white, blue or green with the Alcide, because then if we're uh, trying to protect a creature that has a bunch of auras with those corresponding colors on it, then those auras will also fall off. And uh, then, of course, the Alcid can also come up if we're trying to get in combat with one of our creatures, as we can name the color of one of the blocking creatures and potentially have our creature survive. So lots of cool things we can do with this, as well as, of course, being an enchantment, which works quite nicely with our Satessan Champion. And then we also have the full place of Karmatra's Blessing, which is another way of protecting our creature, as it gives plus two plus two until end of turn to the targeted creature. But if it's an enchanted creature or an enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So nice one mana trick to protect our creatures. And then rounding out the deck, we have two copies of Utropia, the Twice Favored, a legendary creature with Constellation, saying whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and that creature gains flying until end of turn. So a nice combo with our Staggering Insight, as we can potentially give the enchanted creature flying, so it can ignore any ground blockers and guarantee the card draw. And also just another payoff for playing a bunch of enchantments. And then looking at our mana base, we do have maybe a little bit more blue than we need for the main deck, but the reason we have so many blue sources is for some of our sideboard cards, which we want to be able to play pretty early. So we've got uh, all the shock lands, so for Breeding Pool, for Temple Garden, for Hallowed Fountain. We've got two basic planes, two basic islands, and two copies of Temple of Mystery. We're not playing a whole lot on turn one outside of the Alsaid, so playing a tap land on turn one is fine. But of course the downside of playing a third color is that we have way more shock lands, so we'll take a bit of damage from our own mana base, but hopefully we can make up for it with the Staggering Insight. Then moving on to the sideboard, we have two copies of Eidolon of Obstruction to make activated abilities of Planeswalkers cost one generic mana more to activate, so shines against the early Teferis and Narsets, which are both annoying for the deck. Narset of course shutting down a ton of card draw that we have in the deck, like the Season, the Champion, the Training and the Insight. And then Teferi can bounce one of our creatures, and we can't even use our Karmatra's Blessing while Teferi's in play to protect our creatures. We've got one copy of Hushbringer, which can come in against the new Thassa, enter the battlefield decks that have started showing up, and can also be brought in against the Jeskai Fires of Invention decks, which have a ton of ETB creatures like the various Cavaliers. Then we've got the full playset of Cerulean Drake, which of course shines against the Mono Red deck as a 2 mana 1 1 flyer with protection from red, so we can safely load it up with a bunch of auras without having the opponent remove it, and can of course block all their creatures until we're ready to turn the drake sideways, and can also be brought in against the Jeskai decks as it survives Deafening Clarion, and also can block a Cavalier of Flame without any issues. 
And then we've got two copies of Mystical Dispute, which we can bring in against the opposing blue decks as a potential one mana counter spell, which is not too difficult to keep up. And then four copies of Teferi Time Reveler in our sideboard as well, which is uh, great in a variety of matchups, like the counter spell heavy decks like Blue White Control can bring it in against the Teamer Reclamation decks, which want to play at instant speed and can even bring it in against the red decks as a way of delaying an Ember Cleave and just buying ourselves more time. And finally, two copies of Archon of Sun's Grace as an extra threat we can bring in out of the sideboard, which makes a 2-2 Flying Pegasus token whenever we play an enchantment, so plenty of synergy with the main deck as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this seems fine. Looking for a third land, hopefully one that's untapped. Island's great. Next turn go Temple into Alsaid. Turn 3, set us in Champion maybe. Season of Growth seems fine. Against Black this might be a grindy matchup. So I could play the Season first before the Champion or I could just commit the Champion and hope it doesn't get removed. Right, remorse probably takes away the champion, so happy to have the second draw engine. Could also make a case for playing Utropia, and then if we draw a land 4 I can go season into training. But maybe want to keep the Alsades to protect Utropia from a 3 mana removal spell. That's fine. Another season? Yeah, sure. And Davriel, alright. Guess I'll keep my enchantments to go with my season I don't think you'll be needing that. and hope to draw more uh, creatures along the way. For now I can enchant Alcid. Not sure about that attack. Keep up white mana typically. Sentinel's Eyes is great. Can maybe find a Karmatra's Blessing here, so we could have protected Alsaid. No such luck. Could still take two, I don't know how much the damage matters here. And maybe that uh, disincentivizes my opponent to go for a removal spell. Alright, that's uh, fine. Can just start sacking my auras to it. So it's not a big deal. So probably get rid of the Sentinel's Eyes. Which I can also get back from the graveyard. There's a Blessing. Start here, probably tapping my blue mana as much as possible. Alright, so an extra season into probably the Sentinel's Eyes. Or I could keep up uh, Karmatra's Blessing. In case of a Chaos Wrath, perhaps. And then just sack a training next turn. Seems okay. Oath means we need to Blessing. Could actually have decided to Blessing a response, then they couldn't even target the Alcid in the first place. But then they could just uh, 
deal three to themselves to gain three, so I guess it doesn't make a difference. All right, we'll sack training. And then probably start with uh, Sentinel's Eyes. Have to be careful that we don't deck ourselves. But this does represent a lot of damage. And then we'll still have Karmatra's Blessing back up. And I guess they're just dead here. Got trample, so chumping doesn't help. Well, Season of Growth definitely did a ton of work, and then the Doom Foretold not too effective once we get our auras going. Alright, so moving on to the sideboard against the Black Whites, Doom Foretold. Probably want Arkan as an extra threat. The fairy could be okay since it's something I don't mind sacking to the Doom Foretold once we bounce a card with it. So could see that being okay. Eutropia probably not amazing here. Staggering Inside is also a card I don't mind cutting in removal heavy matchups. Same with all the glitters, but as we saw there, it is a way to quickly end the game once we've got a ton of cards to work with. Don't think I need the Hushbringer. Hushbringer can also be a bit of a nombo with Champion if we play Alsaid, because then we don't get to draw the card. Don't think I need Eidolon. Alright, on the draw. This hand doesn't seem great. The card I'm really looking for is Season of Growth, as we saw in the previous game. Seems like one of our more important cards. Another pretty mediocre hand. Five lands is a lot. Of course, we do get to scry a bunch. But uh, I think we can do better. This is better. And then I probably just ditch the Blessing and the Aldad Glitters. Alright, Kaya. Pretty effective against our Alsaid and our uh, Vigilance Enchantment. If they play Doom Foretold next turn, I don't love having to sacrifice Paradise Root or Satassin Champion, so instead I could play the Fairy, bounce the wall, and then hopefully draw some lands. Ooh, Elspeth's Nightmare. That's unfortunate. Although it also would have killed Citizen Champion. Nah, I guess we'll play a champion now. Elspeth conquers death on the champion. Pretty effective too. And 
the nice thing about Season of Growth is that it also survives the Conqueror's death. Hopefully this champion survives for a turn, and we find white mana. And Liliana, Dreadhorde General. It's gonna be hard to beat. Well, after seeing all these Planeswalkers, I could consider bringing in the Eidolon. Think I minus on nothing here. Don't want to give them another Conqueror's Death. Like so this game seems pretty much over. They might have also sideboarded out Doom Foretolds for what it's worth. So Eidolon's coming in. And then... What do we take out? Maybe shave two to fairies anyway. Be on the play. Got our season, so... Seems like a keeper. Want to avoid tapping Paradise Druids in case of a Elspeth's Nightmare. Ooh, Remorse. Taking a Satasan Champion, interestingly. I would think they would uh, want to take the Season of Growth instead. Yeah, let's play the Season. And pass a turn. Takes both champions, that's fine. Probably don't need land four at the moment. And then next turn I can Sentinel's Eyes start attacking. Four mana do nothing. They're still pretty far from casting Liliana, Dreadhorde General, which would be one way of getting rid of the Paradise Root here. Blessing protects from a Sweeper. Don't quite have lethal here, but uh, 10 damage, not too bad. And then... Don't really want to play the Allsid, because if they do play Liliana, they'll be able to kill both of my creatures, and then next turn I could go Arkhan plus Allsid to refuel. So probably play Teferi. And just plus for now. Even though I could have minus to maybe find another Karma Trust Blessing in case of another Chaos Wrath. Although they didn't cast one on turn 4. So maybe they drew it for the turn. Alright, they do have Liliana. That was the worst case. But we get to refuel here with Arkan. Another Archon seems good.
And then might as well play the Sentinel's Eyes. Targeting the token. Should probably prioritize exiling creatures in case of Kaya. Another season seems good. Don't worry, I got this. All right, and that does it. Sweet. So managed to beat Black White Doom Foretold. On to the next one. We'll be on the play. Fine opening hands. Uh, let's see what we're up against. Probably okay keeping the Temple Garden here in case we lose a Paradise Druid so we still have white mana. Facing Hallowed Fountain, so could be blue-white control. Probably still lead with Paradise Druids and then next turn I can go Season into Training. Hopefully no Dovin's Veto. That resolved pretty quickly. Going for training into a Teferi is maybe not the best, but I'll get to draw my two cards here at least. So it's probably fine. Brazen Borrower to bounce, all right. So we only get to draw the one card, sadly. Not a card you see in every main deck. All right, I see, so our points on the blue-white flicker deck. Well, that one Hushbringer in the sideboard is going to be useful. So Paradise Druid plus Sentinel's Eyes is kind of the combo we're looking for. Champion seems okay, although might be light on enchantments. So I could maybe wait and play it next turn. Actually, don't hate that idea. Another Charming Prince. Keeps the card on top. So good training, but then another Brazen Borrower could punish us. So probably we just play a tap lands and pass a turn. And the next turn I could go Utropia into training and start flying over. This might be a Cavalier, which I guess could still block. No, it's the white Cavalier. I expect it's uh, a blue one, but uh, Cavalier of Dawn makes sense too. Pretty good combo with Thassa, since you can destroy Thassa, which is indestructible, and make a 3-3 Golem every turn. Staggering Insight seems good. So it can go Eutropia into Staggering Insights. Training, sure, why not? And even have Karmatra's Blessing back up. And a Teferi. Alright, that's fine. I know my responsibility. Just gonna plus since there's nothing good to bounce.
So Ensign doesn't draw cards when we hit Planeswalkers. Opponents could have a Sweeper like uh, Shatter the Sky. And I can't use the Blessing while Teferi's in place. I think I do still try and kill Teferi here. So let's lead with the training. Could also give the Golem token flying with Eutropia and attack the fairy with that. So this can go face and draw me a card. Although they might have interaction for the Golem. So the worst case is they have another Brazen Borrower bounce this. And then have a Shatter the Sky. So I don't think it's worth it. Hmm, I might be able to just kill them. Mystical dispute. It's uh, unexpected. Sure. Could pay for it, but then I needed to tap my Paradise Roots, which seemed bad. So now I'll just play it safe and kill the fairy, and then we should be in good shape going forward. Because now we have double blessing at the ready. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up. So the blue-white flicker deck. What do we want to bring in? Well, Hushbringer seems good. Eidolons can slow down to Teferi. And then could bring in my own Teferis to shut down any counter spells like they showed us the Mystical Disputes. I do like Eutropia, since that can help us uh, fly over a board stall. So there's no cards that are really bad in the matchup. If they're going to rely on Shatter the Sky, I'll say it's not the best. And we did just bring in a couple creatures, so we're a bit soft to that now. Could bring in Arcan as an extra threat, but it's pretty vulnerable. So maybe shave two Alsades and then take out one Staggering Insight, something along with those lines. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine hand. Fine keeping another lands. And the next turn we could go champion into Alsaid. The fairy minuses just to draw a card. Now I might be overextending into a Shatter the Sky, but this hand is pretty soft to that no matter what. So hopefully we'll draw some creatures if they have it. It's just a guard mage. Don't worry, I got this. I 
So glitters would be plus three right now. So that seems good. And then we'll go after Teferi. Well, jumping there doesn't make a ton of sense, since uh, both were aimed at the ferry. Another Sentinel's Eyes is alright. I'm just worried that if they do have a Shatter, we will need another creature. So I think I'll put that on the bottom for now. Alright, can do some serious damage here with a second glitters and training giving trample. Eutropia gives us a backup creature in case something happens. Still didn't want to play my uh, land in case we found Karmatra's Blessing. Then I wanted to play land untapped, otherwise crying first before drawing makes sense. Eidolon of Obstruction doesn't seem amazing. Cavalier of Dawn. Alright, they seem in trouble. I guess they can get rid of the trample enchantments. So... Is that what they're targeting? Yeah. But I can protect naming uh, white, since this can target enchantments as well. Untap and uh, attack with all. No reason to overextend. Alright, and that'll do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Paradise Druid into maybe Champion plus Alsades if we draw lands. Alright, so we could go for Champion, might get countered. Could go for Sentinel's Eyes. To give the Paradise Red Vigilance and then uh, take it from there. Kind of like that. And then I have Karmatra's Blessing in case something goes wrong. We're gonna bounce the sentinel's eyes, sure. So... 
I guess I'll just replay it. And then really want blue mana, so I don't need to tap my Paradise Root, but Plane still lets me go Champion into Allsade, which is okay. So I'll take it. Now, do I still want to play the Alsade, or do we keep it to go with the champion? Probably keep it. Alright, put on taps out. More champions on the way. Play this tapped since we can still use the Paradise Root for mana in case we need to have access to the All Saves ability. And then next turn we could uh, play Second Champion, Staggering Insight, while keeping a Blessing. Maybe even put this on the Citizen Champion instead of the Paradise Druids. Or I could still put it on Druids. And then not attack. Or attack and then use Alsate. Yeah, I guess attacking and using Alsate's fine. And then I can name green so the inside doesn't fall off. It's Nissa time. champion. Inside seems fine. And then where do we send these? Could just send citizen champion at Nyssa. If they trump that's fine. If they take it I can finish it off with a blessing. If I send both, then they would put the island in front of the Paradise Druids, and I wouldn't kill Nyssa. But I would kill the islands. Let's go with this. Put on Trumps, sure. So this is a big Hydroid Crisis, perhaps. X equals 6. Opponent up to 14. Negates. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
still get to draw from the season. That's a good one. Probably wanted to pay a bit more attention how I was tapping my mana to keep up more white. Uh, let's see. All right. Against the blue-green flash, bring in the fairies, dispute, take out. What don't we like? Eutropia's a bit on the slow side. The evasion can be nice, but we're also bringing in a bunch of three drops with the fairies, so I think that can go. And then staggering insides probably the next uh, card to go here, as it's a bit on the clunky side. Against a bunch of counter spells, at least all the glitters is a way to potentially go over the top. Still like the blessing, the sentinel's eyes look good, the all side is a fine cheap enchantment. And uh, resolving a turn to seasons can also be game winning. Archon of Sun's Grace is also consideration to give us a bit of evasion, but doesn't match up great against the giant hydroid crisis. And Eidolon just for Nissa doesn't seem worthwhile. Could have also considered Hushbringer to shut down Frilled Mystic, but with the fairy that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Need more creatures. Can attack. Could go for glitters. And then we'll still have Karmatra's Blessing available in case of any interaction. Don't really want to get the fairy countered once again. Not a grow spiral, that's fine. But no land drops, so their hand is full of action. And her opponent concedes, must have had a pretty expensive hand with maybe a couple missiles or hydroid crisis that they couldn't cast. Alright, sweet, so yeah. The fairy a nice sideboard option against uh, Simic deck as well. Although I didn't see too much of it in action. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.